Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for episode 4 of Road to Colonization, and we start with a launch of a Pulsar X. On top of this rocket, there is a probe which will be bound for Joule. This one will not run out of electric charge. If you watch Road to Exploration, you know that a huge amount of my probes would just run out of electric charge because remote tech antennas use a lot of um, electric charge and I didn't bring enough solar panels. This, of course, has RTGs because now we have discovered them. However, it does make my uh, probes very expensive because RTGs aren't cheap because plutonium is expensive. But still, it's fine. We got money and the rockets are reusable, so it sort of balances out. And we've got a bunch of missions out at Tylo, so in three years, this will pay off. So that's good. Um, the other probe actually did get into orbit of um, Joule, but it used a Tylo assist um, because it was out of electric charge, but it planned it so it would get into orbit anyway. So we decoupled the fairings. For once, I actually used clamshell fairings, the far more pretty way of decoupling your fairings. And we're going to push on into orbit. This, of course, being the single stage to orbit rocket, which uh, makes it very easy to reuse the whole rocket um, for a bigger return on investment because you can land it at your uh, land it at the launch light or very close to depending on how well i do things anyway there we are the camera changes telling us that we are in orbit and we can decouple the probe and get it on its way well after we've landed the rocket and things so we decouple it the uh, shroud sort of almost tears the rocket apart and this is gone and you can see it there it's got three nuclear engines two of the boosters actually do decouple i don't usually do that because i kind of like just one um, one tr one transfer stage because it's slightly more realistic, but this was just so much easier. So you know it, the it fuel feeds in, and then it breaks where the other boost is and just uses one. But anyway, let's deal with the rocket, send it th screeching through the atmosphere, burning up, probably losing those little stabilization wings, which is fine because they're you know pretty cheap. But still, uh, it looks like we're going to come in right behind the mountains of the KSC, um, a little further away than I like to land, but hey, you know, it's it's hard to pinpoint these things sometimes, and I wasn't paying quite enough attention. We come down and uh, into one times time accelerate to see the landing, and it's looking rather nice. We've got a bunch of fuel on this because it was a fairly light payload. I think it was 27 tons with fairings, and this can do 30 tons in, uh, plus fairings, so that's fine. And we touch down but the parachutes disappear and it starts to tip. Usually when this happens, the parachutes are still there, but I slowed down too much so it falls over with full force and explodes, leaving only a few little bits and the engine block. I do recover the engine block, but we don't get any money back for it, so that's annoying, and I am gonna try and work on that so that we can land on land more easily. But anyway, we'll deal with that later. Right now, we've gotta to go to back to orbit where everything's looking much better, and we're gonna go down our way. So yeah, three nuclear engines is a very expensive spacecraft because the, well, firstly, the rocket exploded um, on landing. Secondly, nuclear engines, pretty expensive. Thirdly, fucking RTG is really expensive. This was not a cheap mission. But yes, this um, is an orbiter which will be traveling around Joule, going to all the moons, getting science, completing missions, and a small lander. Well, sort of lander. It will, it's a, it'll enter the atmosphere of lathe um, and land nicely, hopefully, on the land or the oceans and get us a little bit of science. It's very compact. It's pretty much just a bunch of scientific equipment behind a heat shield. But I really like how it looks. And, you know, hopefully soon, sometime, you'll see it land. It won't take as long as it would have in Road to Exploration because I'm moving more quickly. I'm, I've kind of strapped my dual launch every week sort of thing. Um, which I usually do to move time forward more quickly, but now I'm just going to basically, you know, warp to when I need to be, because we don't have so many little things to do as we did in that Road to Exploration, because this is Road to Colonization, we have everything set up, kind of, and uh, we're going to, you know, get going. We've got a lot of stuff to do, we've got to go, well, we've got stuff to do on Duna, which we're going to do today, and sometime we've got to go back to Duna. Anyway, we've decoupled the boosters, as you, as you can see, and I really like how this looks with just the one, uh, with just the one booster. And yes, we get our encounter, which is going to get a little closer, and uh, do a tweak at some point so that we can uh, get right down there. And that's looking rather good, so let's uh, activate the antenna. Um, which can be done in the dark now because we have radio thermal generators, which is rather useful. Um, but yeah, you can get a bit of a look at it now. You can see that it's got a bunch of RTGs on there. You can see there's a little lander down there, and it's a pretty big orbiter because there's a lot of stuff on Joule to, you know, look at. Anyway, now I'm thinking about solving that booster problem. So I've made myself some landing legs out of these structural pylons, which I think look quite good. The only problem is that they don't fold up like real landing legs. There are some mods that would do this quite well, like reusability expansion, which gives you some SpaceX -y landing legs. But I kind of like the idea of doing this stock. And I could launch stuff just with these landing legs out because I could get rid of the wings. It wouldn't add too much drag. It adds a bit of mass. 
but I think this could be a good solution because the landing legs do work quite well, as you can see. I think they look quite good, and him, I don't know how much they'd impede a launch. Anyway, I do try a slightly different setup, which are some slightly closer in landing legs, which are using one structural pylon and then kind of these structural beams, these girder looking things, so that they're very close in. It'll reduce drag a bit. Um, it won't reduce mass. It'll reduce mass a little bit, but yeah, so I'm going to try this. It doesn't look quite as nice, but I think this would be more functional. So let's try and land this, see if it lands as well as the last one. Just launching this over the VAB and going to land it on the grass, obviously. Nice, easy test. Um, I would like to one day land a booster coming back from orbit on top of the VAB, because that would be the coolest thing ever. I think that is eventually going to be my plan because um, <laughs> the ultimate test of vehicles is if they can land on top of the VAB. But anyway, this touches down with a little more flex and bounce, but it works quite well, so maybe I'll include some makeshift landing legs in future on these rockets. Anyway, the bulk of the video is stuff at Duna. Uh, if you didn't watch Road to Exploration, you might not know, but we sent a pretty big mission to Duna. We've got a base on the surface, um, with some Kerbals on it, but we also have some Kerbals in orbit on the Concordia, this spacecraft, and they are the Ike crew. They've already been to Ike, they've done a little bit of science, but now they've got to go back to do more science and also plant a flag to get more money. So I did a quick check there because I uh, thought I needed some tools out of those boxes for this um, Kerbal, but apparently I didn't. He already has a screwdriver on him, which is good because sometimes you need to make impromptu repairs. That's Kerbal inventory system and Kerbal attachment system, which allows you to change things in orbit, you know, pull off parts, attach parts. It's quite useful. Um, so yeah, we've got our engineer in there. And we're going to get our pilot, Valentina, of course, and a scientist in there to head on out to Ike. So there we are. We're all um, ready, but we've got to make a stop at the resource station because this isn't quite fueled up enough. And we can't take fuel from the Concordia because it sort of needs that fuel for going home. But we have a little station we sent with, um, with this whole mission. And it's, yeah, it, it's got a bunch of fuel and a bunch of life support and a bunch of monopropellant on there. And after a bit of planning, you can see we've got ourselves an encounter. It's in a very different orbit to Concordia. Um, so yeah, we're going to get on up there, we're going to do a little burn, and we're going to, you know, get some stuff and head on out to Ike so we can do more science. And Ike's quite nice because it has very low gravity, so it's quite, you know, easy to land on. Anyway, so after all of that, we've got ourselves an encounter. We need to tweak it a little bit because I overburned a tiny bit. But yeah, we should be arriving in one orbit's time. Now I realized that while I had been doing some uh, research in the lab on the Concordia, I haven't been utilizing the lab on the surface of Duna. And I have taken some scientific reports, but I haven't been doing anything with them. Um, it doesn't matter because I hadn't really set up the base properly, I just got it down there. I haven't even set up the um, carbon extractors and the farm yet, but we'll do that as well. So yes, we need to set up all of the extra things on the base. So we've got a, a Kerbal out to grab a few scientific reports. We accidentally plant a flag, but that's fine because we get a world first, and we wanted to put a flag down anyway, I can't believe I've forgotten. Um, and we're going to call it Duna Base because I was all flabbergasted by act accidentally pressing the flag button. That, yeah. Um, so there we go, that's down, and we've just got to get an EVA report because we've got a we've got a surface sample, and uh, now we just need to get ourselves our EVA report so we can throw that in the lab and have our scientists do some research because. We need more science. We need to unlock the narrowband scanners for our mining operations on Minmus and other planets because we only have the wide band scanners which can give you a vague idea of what where the ore is on the surface, but we need some proper equipment which will find us good places to mine so that we can set up a proper mining operation. So anyway, we also get our Kerbal out to head over to the lander because the lander took a bunch of reports when it landed um, as it tends to do. Uh, and yeah, we're, so we're going to grab that and put that in the lab as well. Um, I kind of did sort of forget about this. Um, I, I meant to do this in kind of earlier on, but it's only been four episodes, so it's fine. Um, yeah, Duna has pretty high gravity, so you can see I'm having trouble with the RCS pack. So what I actually decide to do is drop this little spanner. However, it explodes, which is annoying because I kind of need that spanner because it allows me to detach parts. I'm not sure if I have another one, so that'll be kind of annoying. Um, yeah, but it was weighing me down. If you carry things in your Kerbal inventory system, it weighs you down quite a bit. Anyway, we've got all our scientific reports now. We're going to go get into the lab. Uh, yeah, going to get our scientist into the lab, get our um, experiments in there as well. And yeah, we'll just start adding them, start getting some data and produce some science. Um, I think we end up with producing about five science a day with just one um, scientist, which is pretty impressive because usually that requires kind of two scientists. But hey, surface of Duna, that's where you want to be. So yeah, let's add all of these. And um, what's happening here? I think we, yeah, yeah, I think that's good. I think that's all the ones we need. 
And that's good, cool. We got ourselves a, a lab going, producing five plants a day. Now, we have some other things to set up. The, we, this module on the left there is a greenhouse, which means that this base could be fairly self-sustainable. Um, so we're gonna turn this on. We've got a Kerbal in there now who can go and work on it, and we're gonna activate that. And it looks as if our food um, is no longer going down, which is pretty cool. The only problem is there might be some additional waste, but I'm hoping all of this will utilize it quite well. And um, yeah, I'm gonna check back in about 100 days to see how the resources stack up, because we don't wanna fill up our waste tanks because then having loads of life support is useless. Um, but anyway, we're also gonna turn on our water filter and carbon extractor so that we can have more water and oxygen than we need. Uh, well, not more than we need, just we can sustainably use it. Um, and it does seem to counteract the uh, loss of, I think, oxygen. I can't actually read the text because post-production windows and all of that, <clears throat> uh, it doesn't play in full resolution because it's raw. For it. it doesn't matter. Anyway, um, but yeah, it looks like we're still losing either water or oxygen, but one of them is fine. So yeah, it does seem to be working. It would be nice to know if this works properly because it would be good to have a proper self-sustainable base somewhere. Anyway, now all of the Duna base stuff is done. We've got all of our science, our scientists working. We've got all of our um, life support working. It's time to head on to the station so we can grab a bunch of resources, refuel the life support, refuel the fuel, and get all that working so we can head on to Ike go land, get a bunch of science. Um, we come around in the dark, which is a little annoying, I understand, because the uh, lighting in KSP is a little uh, little intense, um, especially with Scatterer. You can't even see anything on the ground at night, which is cool, but also kind of annoying when you're trying to pick landing spots at night. Anyway, there's the station. It's pretty much just um, a big fuel tank with some life support on it, and I've kept the booster on there because it had some extra fuel in it. Anyway, we get docked, all is looking good, and we're gonna grab the fuel into our tanks. Um, it's nice to be able to use fairly small landers because Duna obviously has fairly low gravity so it's easy to get to Ike and then Ike's fairly big but also has fairly low gravity so it's easy to land on. So yeah, it's much easier than landing on the moon in Kerbin. Um, obviously you have to get to Duna first though. Anyway, so we're gonna grab all of the life support there. However, after refueling the food, water and oxygen, I go to refuel the waste and the waste tank is actually just a food tank which means I have nowhere to put additional waste, which is a major problem. Like, that's a serious issue because, not just for these landers, because I kind of might, why is the station squirreling like that? It's really annoying. Anyway, because I might need this, I might need, I might need to put waste from the Concordia into the station, and I might not be able to do that, so we might not be able to get home safely. We might have to leave some Kerbals on the surface, <laughs> which, uh, I guess we'll see. I think Concordia does have enough life support, but the station, but the little station over there was an important backup. Um, so we have a problem that we might not have enough space to put all of our waste materials. And that's the problem with TAC life support. That's what we're using for life support, by the way. That's the mod TAC life support. Um, it's the, you know, one everyone uses for this kind of stuff. But yeah, so that revelation was rather terrifying. But anyway, we'll deal with that when we come to it. Maybe leave some Kerbals here, whatever. Um, they'll, we'll just take them all down to Duna, have a fight to the death, and then whoever doesn't die can come home. Um, I'm thinking that, I'm thinking I'm gonna start a Kerbal Duna fighting arena. It's, yeah, there's no laws on Duna. <laughs> anyway, um, here we are at Ike. Let's go land, hopefully not where we landed last time so we can get some new signs. The mission is just to plant a flag which will pay for the mission, I guess. We basically want to get as many missions done while we are on Duna so we can get as much money out of it because it was a really expensive uh, operation building the Concordia and everything else. Um, I don't do small missions. They're always expensive. Anyway, so we land rather nicely on Ike. Well, almost land. I put into one times time accelerate. That was preemptive. But anyway, yeah, we're going to touch down rather beautifully. Um, yeah, really slowly nice. Really sl really slowly, comma, nice is what I meant to say. <laughs> Um, anyway, yes, so there we are on Ike, looking rather beautiful, looking a bit like the moon. I think we faked the Ike landings. I think it was really just the moon. Um, <laughs> anyway, apparently I've also got all of my scientific reports in from last time in the um, cockpit, so that was kind of dumb of me. So I'm going to take them out and put them back in so we can get another crew report, because if you do that, it stores the crew report as just another report, which means you can take as many crew reports as you want in a pod. Yeah, I should probably have been processing these experiments, but um, 
I think I already had the maximum number I could really be processing in the lab. But anyway, I should really pay more attention to my Duna mission, is what we've learned from today. Anyway, so we get out of the, uh, well, we tumble out of the spacecraft, grab some scientific reports, throw down the flag um, for, you know, uh, for about 150 grand. We get, uh, we just put down where we landed so we know in future. And then we try and get on the ladder, flip off, and smash a solar panel. Yes, KSP ladder physics are the jankiest physics in the world. So yeah, we broke that solar panel just by being flung off a ladder, which was kind of annoying. But hey, we got a bunch of money from this, we can pay for a new solar panel. So we're going to get all of these scientific reports as well, get our engineer out, pull the ladder out, and then fall off anyway, because... I don't know, Kerbals are dumb. Uh, <laughs> the, I try and get the engineer to fix this, but it doesn't work, so we just remove it because I don't want the extra mass. Um, and then we're going to grab all the science. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of annoying, the ladder physics. I've never had it do anything terrible before, but losing a solar panel is kind of annoying. Um, but it's fine, we'll just leave it here. And then he also gets flung off the ladder. Luckily, he doesn't hit a solar panel. He just sort of breaks his arm. But that's fine. He only needs one to hold that screwdriver. It's cool. Anyway, let's get him back in the spacecraft. And they'll be here for a little while, but they'll hopefully return at next episode. Anyway, back around Kerbin on Odin Station. We need to rearrange this station a little bit. And I didn't want to launch anything, so I've set up the lab to build ourselves a little tug which is going to move um, which is going to move the workshop around. Now the workshop only has one docking port on it so this is the only way we actually can move it because when you launch something it's fixed to the launch pad so this means if I fuel it up I can move it around um, relocate the uh, relocate the workshop. Did I say lab? I meant workshop. Um, and then I can decouple the well, then I can actually launch the uh, tug, and then it can move other things. So I'm just going to put this up here, so it's more of a line station. I don't really like it on the side, mostly because it's blocking docking ports, and slightly because it just looks a bit janky. Um, so yeah, we're just going to move this on up here. This, interestingly, is at four times time accelerate, but I do my maneuvers so slowly, because I like just the serene slowness of space maneuvers, that it looks as if it was at one times time accelerate. Anyway, yes, yeah, so we're going to re uh, reorientate this. It's very nice to be able to build things in orbit, especially when you forget to put extra docking ports on these things um, because yeah and then we're going to be able to decouple this tug and it can be able to rearrange the station as much as it wants or rescue things that kind of run out of fuel so yeah it's, it's I'm pretty happy about this I'm not exactly sure how I want the station to be yet but uh, it's getting closer now that I've rearranged this however I do want it to be in the different orientation um, so that it's more aligned with the fuel tank so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and put it back on there um, so yeah a little bit of station reor reorientation. We're going to do this until I'm actually happy with the station because I'm actually not really right now. It looks ugh, doesn't look quite right. Um, it looked better in the VAB. <laughs> but anyway, yes, let's get this back onto the station and uh, yeah, and then I'm probably going to re relocate the tug at some point, but uh, not right now. But now we have a moon mission to do. So um, we're loading up the Thor 1 with a pilot and an engineer and a scientist. And we're going to head out to the moon to complete a mission. And uh, we do a bit of a risky maneuver because the station was almost prograde of us. So we fly past it, scare the hell out of everyone inside it, and head on to the moon. Yeah, we've got to go and take some gravitational reports at various locations around the moon. So that's what we're going to go and try and do now. Um, and yeah... So I'm going to cut through this burn because this is a very slow accelerating spacecraft with that little engine. But yeah, here we go. You can see that we're just getting up there. I think it takes like three or four minutes to do these burns. Maybe six. I don't know. Anyway, so there we go. We've got ourselves our encounter and we're just going to head on up there, do the science. Um, I do have a base on the moon, which I would like to return to, but this mission isn't close enough to the base for me to be able to drive to it. Because I also have a rover at the moon, which I can do fairly close-range missions with it. I once did do a 20-kilometer journey and then back um, in Road to Exploration, but that was uh, that took a while. <laughs> um, anyway, let's get into orbit, and then uh, we're going to go land there. Yeah, you can see it's kind of just in this random crater. Um, got to take four reports fairly close to the to each other, but I forgot to bring a screwdriver, so I have to fly the um, spacecraft to each place rather than just being able to remove the gravioli detector and, you know, take it to the places itself. And, yeah, so I'm going to have to burn a, bun a bunch of extra fuel. Anyway, we're going to get all of our life support added into here, um, into the uh, cockpit, uh, just, just in case we're on the moon for a while. Um, we'll have a couple of days of life support. And then we're going to go and land. So that we can uh, get the science, get the money, mostly the money. I think uh, we do get some science from this uh, biome as we haven't been here in a while. 
So it's only had some basic scientific reports taken from it. So that's good. But mostly it's about the money. We've got to get some money. Our stations are very expensive and we aren't we aren't turning over a lot of money right now. We've got a bunch of long-term investments like jewel probes and elu probes. But right now, nothing much. So anyway, yeah, we're going to fly over this ridge. I've also put it in a bit of a stupid... I, I deorbited kind of stupidly. So you can see that my, um, I, my orbital path keeps getting too close to the target, so I'm having to burn a bunch of extra fuel to make sure I actually land at the targets. This is all just me wasting a lot of fuel, and I forgot to fuel up the reserve tanks. There's four little reserve tanks on the bottom of the spacecraft, which I rarely fuel up because most missions don't require it, but because, well, partly because I'm doing this landing maneuver stupidly, and partly because I've got to jump around a bit, it would have been really nice to have some of those fuel tanks um, fueled up so that we could, you know, have a little extra fuel. But anyway, we'll land fine, we'll be able to do most of the mission fine, it just would have been nice to have a little extra fuel for um, the rest of the mission. But anyway, there we go, touching down beautifully on the surface of the moon. And we will do those reports in future episodes, well, in the next episode. And we're going to take a little bit of science now, um, but we're not in the right place to complete the missions. But there is a bunch of science to be taken. But anyway, this is the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. I know it was a day late. I've been very busy. Um, it also may be a bit late next week. I'm just giving you a preemptive warning because I have a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but anyway, if you'd like to go check out a couple more videos, there is my latest episode of Prison Architect, in which we build a prison reform program. We build a school inside a prison. And there is also my latest episode of Subscriber Designs, in which a bunch of futuristic fighters look amazing. And there's also a giant VTOL. It's just a bunch of craziness. There are also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been KSP with Tape. I'll see you next time.